It's funded uh, by Northport and a couple of other independent opportunities agencies. Um, so we can donate to their uh, support. And how it works is the winners receive up to fifty thousand dollars in cash to put their ideas into action. Thus, there's uh, mentoring and support um, from season business people uh, at the uh, mentor Man program. And so this round, we're expecting that need for And I think the minimum we've done has been, uh, has been six. And in fact, in our most recent round, we had six. And you're going to hear from five of those companies tonight. The other gentleman is also out of the country, so we can be here. But we'll, we'll, we'll see him in the future. Uh, in the future, thank you for that expect so far. So how, how does it work? How does the judging, so how, how does the selection happen? It's basically, um, there are five key areas that are evaluated. First, it has to be an early stage, no social basis company. And for Smart Key Brand, of course, it has to be based here in Key Brand. We, we look really seriously at the people, the team, that they have industry knowledge and uh, management experience, or domain expertise, and and that they, they really bring something to, to the project that's uh, under development. From a market perspective, when we look at the Madman, we want to see a large, growing international market. Um, and some, something that's um, I don't say easy to identify, but at least it's an addressable market. And you can articulate a map and how to reach that market. Uh, competition. There's always competition, don't let anybody don't think that there have competition even if it's something new. We want to see that uh, the companies have a high barrier to competitive energy. So but you know, we don't want to see somebody be able to just very easily copy or duplicate what what they're doing. So that's the, the barrier to competitive energy. Sometimes that could be intellectual property, but it's not a necessity. Might that be that's uh, that market advantage or uh, yeah, we don't need to use it with that. And then finally, execution. We want to see a credible plan, um, even, uh, not necessarily easy to reach, but reachable key milestones, and also that the uh, that funding that you're going to receive is actually going to help you get somewhere. So that you know, if the maximum that we have for the structure from is 50,000, um, we don't want to see a plan worth 5 million because 50,000 is just this will be our fourth round. We've had a pilot, uh, and, uh, and this, as I said, is our, our third competition after the pilot. And we've had uh, a number of companies, and you'll recognize some of them on the slide here. Many of these have already uh, presented at either that tech social uh, or uh, had, had a previous demo day through uh, Startup Free Present. And um, we're really proud to see companies continue to, to grow and prosper. And the enter. entering is uh, pretty easy. All of the information is on the OpenCorp website. OpenCorp.ca slash spark will get you right to the page. And from there, you can actually download the information kit, and there's a, a submission form online. And you simply answer the questions on the form, and that really provide the essentials of the, uh, the business plan. Um, and you have to then submit that by the deadline, which is 5 o'clock, Atlantic time, on Wednesday, June 29th. So I have, uh, I have copies of the information kit here, so you can actually take a home with you. And I mentioned it is also it's just on the internet on the website. The key dates we've got uh, today is the launch, of course. Submission is June 29th, that's a Wednesday. The short list will be announced uh, a little less than a month later on Wednesday, July 27th. We'll have, uh, throughout the month of August, we'll have the SPART, we call it the SPART Acceleration Program. It's really a variety of initiatives that, that help those finalists uh, kind of up their game. We usually get the support of the account, uh, luncheon with uh, other SPART alumni. You can learn from what they learned over the course of their uh, um, starting their startup. Um, we all have done some uh, some fish preparation and uh, and help, and then there's some other things that we're working on that uh, that might be beneficial as well. Uh, that will happen throughout the month of August. And finally, the uh, the shortlist, the, the, the top uh, entrance 
will have their decisions and judging on Tuesday, August 30th, with the rumors announced on Thursday, September 1st, and then you get the best of that coach. So we'll, uh, we'll, celebrate the, we'll celebrate the finalists and winners at that September 1st. As you start working through things, if you have questions, you can always give me uh, a call or an email and uh, I've got this in here as well. So tonight, the real highlights, the reason I think is to actually see the, uh, the companies that are going to tell you a little bit of what they've done with, uh, since they've done their, their start and work. Um, last, late last August was when they were officially announced as the, as the winner. So what have they done in nine months? We'll see, uh, each of them will give us a little, uh, a little overview of what they've done, where they're at now, and where they're going. And we're going to start with, start with three. Thanks, Rob. Hi, everyone. My name is Jay Florian from NC FF Applications. I was a sparkly hire in the last summer. The application that I'm building is a tool for organizing your Twitter feed, basically breaking up your Twitter feed from a massive accounts and home feed into separate ones that you can organize yourself. Uh, so, I don't have a ton of time, so I'll just buzz through what I've been up to. So, start back in August, that was when I found out that I qualified for the bonus of spare. It coincided with me finishing school at the time, too. Uh, so, in preparation for that, I got to meet a lot of people, a lot of former spare winners, and uh, I learned a ton in preparation for a final pitch, and then I won. It was more than $15,000 uh, to pursue my idea. So, the excitement was high. September, I got to actually be a real entrepreneur. Uh, I got to meet with an alarm, an accountant, uh, start the incorporation process, started interviewing people to let them potentially work with me. I uh, went to start an Empire Conference, which I've been to a year before as a student, just kind of like watching, waiting, listening, seeing how things work. So it was cool to be there as someone with their own company and, and working actively on something. Um, and the incorporation process is going to take two to four weeks, and I need to do that first before I can receive money. So it's a little bit in limbo, but I was kind of in the honeymoon phase. Uh, October, the honeymoon ended. And what I mean by that is I just started running into my first few problems. Um, the first and most important one was that the name that I had originally chosen uh, to use for my app and for my company, Genius had been uh, used in a variety of different ways. So we went through three different name changes. Each one takes three to five business days and costs them $67.50. <laughs> uh, I put into a trademark uh, and sent a letter requesting use of the trademark, which was denied. Um, and eventually I said, screw it, and went with the number corporation and uh, got moving. Um, another problem I ran into is none of the interviews panned out uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, one, because I didn't have any actual money yet, uh, like some, I'm going to speak in general, uh, just in case any of the are here, but uh, they had uh, different opportunities that were ready to pay me money I wasn't. Some people just weren't confident enough in their skills to think that they could do it. Um, and I was also pretty much broke at that point. Um, but then November rolled around, November, and then everything kind of leveled up. When my corporation went through, uh, that was first bit of money from start, they started having. And then I realized that maybe I wasn't going to find the right person to work with it, but I realized maybe I'd be the one. Uh, it might not be the most technically skilled with it, I spent the last couple of years learning a variety of things. Um, but I realized that I cared about it enough, I was going to learn things, so I'll be the one. I do it cheap, I do it lean, and save some money. So I bought myself a monitor, set up a home office, and we got to work. So December I went to work and I, uh, I, I started getting some real data out of the out of Twitter that I was hoping for, uh, which was cool. It was cool to have this idea and 
inject it into, into the Twitter API and you can get the right kind of data back. And I was, I was pretty pumped that I, in a short time, I've been able to really get moving with it. Um, but before Christmas, I realized that there was a really flaw. I was running into different kind of li data limits and request limits with the Twitter API that I wasn't getting all of the data. Um, and I realized it's right before Christmas, which coincided at the same time I seen friends and family who the last time I saw them. I was making fifteen thousand dollars for this great idea. <laughs> 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 they were asking where all my money was and why I was making that So that was that was fun. Um, but then I went to then I went to January. I had new attitude just like everybody else that time of year. Like, so I contacted all kinds of people from over the US and Canada who are working on similar applications, or even sending my applications to Twitter and trying to like, how do you get through this jungle of a mess to get the data that you need? And at the same time, I went broke again because I followed my paperwork the wrong way. And I had to be <laughs> um, And I realized that not everyone cares about my ideas as much as I do. A lot of these people that I emailed asking for help and suggestions they never got back to me. Or we're not really interested or they're wondering I might not even touch it with some of the spam builders. Um so let me get to February. I was still free to grow and it's a bit a busy time for everyone. I was trying to get help. Um uh, I still didn't get any responses, so I was realizing that these people were really just ignoring me and using the strength. Um and I realized that over the, the previous couple months, I've been tweeting major investors and Twitter and people who were heavily into it. And I've been kind of critical of all this, these dumb features they've been like, I'm like turning the favorite into a lot of like, with a lot of animation and stuff. And as I was skating through and kind of catching up with these people in February, I realized at least half of them had belonged to me on Twitter <laughs> <laughs> because of my criticism. Um, and I'm not interested in the first of all, and I was just pointing out this, this is a bad idea. Type thing. Um, and, and all this while I was reading the world. And Twitter stuff was getting all time record levels. Um, but at the same time, I started looking a bit deeper at all these other Twitter apps that were out there. And I, I realized that if I went into their apps and tried to do certain things that I was having trouble with, they were running into the same trouble too. So I had these 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 apps that I had to go in and break myself because I knew it wouldn't work. And I kind of gave them credit that a lot of people were running into the same problem. In the meantime, I learned a whole bunch of stuff about just different and cool things I had to do with Twitter. And I managed to build small apps and sell a couple of them just to those people that were really trying to have a bit of information on So things did start to look up. And it sort of sort of sorted out my merch. Merch was back in the drawing now. It was back in the black and the bills paid. Um I the initial trade deadline had just passed, and I had used the way that I organized Twitter. To be up to date on all the trades and all my friends were hitting me up asking me like what I knew and stuff and they kind of renewed my faith in this being a good idea. Um, so I, I started hearing that again uh, with kind of a new approach that turned out to be awful. Um, <laughs> I had this one idea where it was going to be kind of like speed dial for Twitter um, and it was going to do all the same things but basically it would just be all like number of speed dial like for the accounts or a single account. And, it was one of those ideas that the reaction I got from people when I told them about was like, great, I'm like, oh man, that's, that's interesting. I'm like, instead of being fun. Um, but by April, I really started to break down the walls. I realized that I didn't have to, I didn't have to exist within the rules of the Twitter API. And in fact, I should be doing everything I can to try and cheat the system and only go in looking for data when I really absolutely needed to. The rest just built on my own. Um, it kind of made me realize that I had a bit of time in the division, just that it was rooted deep in the way like I started out. Um, and, and I adapted it and realized that I, I like, once again, I could see that this was causing the fit. Um, so I stopped asking all these people for help and I really just sat down and started working on myself. And it's really been coming along with it. Um, so that brings us up uh, to today. Uh, today, on May 15th, it's going to be the first time since Christmas that when I pay myself, it's not all going to wait on the door of bills. I'm going to have a, about 150 bucks left. I think I'm going to buy a new business shirt because this has been my go to since 2011. <laughs> um, and as far as the ask concerned, I, I know I can do the organizational thing and I'm working on it very close. It's now just a matter 
I'm scrolling over to wish. The, the least amount of features that I can get in and still have like, a good experience because the last thing I want is this to have happen. People need to use and then go back and do something else and then have to make it so never going to work. And I think I'm close to it. Um, I got a lot of faith in this summer. And since I've done everything so lean, I still have enough money that should last me a few more months through the summer. If it doesn't get through, maybe I'll move on to something else, but I think that it will. And uh, I hope it does. So I'm excited for this now.
over 20 trials. Uh, and we're, we're I'm kind of amazed that right, I can't sell this as easily as I can. I thought it was just going to be like, oh, once it's built, we're just going to roll out the character and, uh, and the money is just going to roll in, right? But that's not the case. There's processes that people have. And uh, something that really helped us when we went to Spark, we were dealing with organizations that were very small didn't have much money, and some of them even, they didn't make money, but they had something they wanted to do for the community. Um, that eventually helped us leverage a uh, beta testing tool with the paper and credit to it, which then they let us, uh, we asked for a piece because we were investing something, and that opened up the door for us to number two, which later led to us with seafoods, and then Port Sydney. So, we went from working with the really small guys to like, which we still are in touch with today. I think I have them on Facebook. Um, <laughs> that's kind of fun. Um, but yeah, so like, we have like to move and transition to that, but like the difference of the like so one solution we had at the very beginning worked for this group of people, but to get dollars for certain features, you need a little bit more and a little bit more. And then you start to get into these larger organizations and learn about the problems. Um, yeah, right now in our desktop version, we track every living piece of data that we can get. Somebody goes for our websites, uh, we can watch the interactions we have live, which is really cool. Um, and if they start to be like clicking the back button, we jump around and pop in and say, hey, like, do you need any help with anything? Um, so that's not helpful. Uh, but yeah, our desktop, like every web traffic, Monday and Friday, is up to the roof. And on uh, weekends, we have like nothing. Uh, <laughs> so, not many people are doing work over weekends. And what we're learning now is that our ideal audience might be, uh, and this is again, you might, because there's just there's a whole list of questions that you have to answer to limit the risk of technical market um, in their markets. So, the marketing people today, there's ebooks, there are webinars, there's videos, there's the traffic codes, there's everything. Um, even right there, they can write pages and websites and stuff. Um, it's kind of all over the place. And if you guys know marketing people, um, sometimes you might think, well, like, you know, they're all over the place. We think that this would be a good tool for hearing your daily science, your weekly science, and to work through them as well. Uh, current operations, we were accepted to an accelerator in a team called Propel ICT. Um, we were working on that for, I don't know how many weeks it's been now, but we brought in some VCs to go through, um, you know, how to set up a meeting, what meeting will be like, um, what financials will you be prepared to ask for, how do you do evaluation, all that stuff. We also got sales training from a group uh, called Cloudcard. Uh, for former employees of Salesforce, uh, they did say. So that was like there's a lot of good resources coming from that. Marketing sales and running, I'm still going through this. I'm actually getting help from, from people in the community who have way more experience in that matter. Uh, I'm doing what I can, but I find it really challenging. Uh, we've got new design coming, more automation than everything I mentioned, uh, and we three customers today. And we're working with them. They can't take us more than that. Questions, there's got to be more. Somebody has to ask me one question. Do you extend your application and do you or do you return it on a basis? We charge on an ongoing basis. Uh, I would say if we, when we start out, we have three dollars per user per month. Then we went up to five, and people were like, well, three months of user problems. Companies were like, oh, this is just a little funny thing, and I was pleased, so you waste some time. Five dollars per user per month, conversations are going to change. Six to fifty per user per month, they start to listen to you. Ten dollars per user per month, and they treat you like a legitimate business deal. So that's the experience we have there, which we actually have a bit more about charging more than us. So. Yeah. 
Up next is AJ Frazier from Radio Technology. So right now we're doing that point. Uh, it's fun 
uh, is social and is almost colorless. Uh, it's funny how today, which is just so much so um, and you know, there's a lot of testing in this game, right? So every time we go on a new feature, we're like, boy, I'm lucky you guys want some data testers on a test flight. Um, and you're getting really great feedback. Sometimes you get a lot of interactions at the point. And you're like, oh my god, get that done. Um, you know, so it's a lot of like, you know, take a different photo like this, well, and just work it on my computer the day, and then do another test on top of that one, and then do another stupid test on that one. And you know, we go up to the app and it's just like a lot of stuff like this, but like, you know, it's fun. You have a little, little pop, you know, you go there, you go back. Um, so, our next steps, um, I think that's one of the things that you want to identify here. Um, our next steps are great, per se. We're going to ask our team, we're going to try and get users, we're going to make that big leap, that fear of failure, get in there as people. And let them tell us that it sucks. But why does it suck? And why are we going to make it better for you? Why are we going to make it awesome? Um, and that I think is, is one of the tricky things I started with and all that other entrepreneurs started with. Um, I, I'll probably answer it now. Um, we just hired on um, two, uh, two more people for our team. They start on Monday. Uh, actually, we can do it here. So we're happy to have you guys here. It's going to be awesome. We're going to really fun time. Um, and, uh, Don't do it. Don't do that. 
Um, so instead of me on the phone with their neighbors, and these guys are going to my dog and working on all of this stuff. Um, the back end is almost complete. Um, I know. So we incorporated the street map data sets as well as the satellite imagery data sets, and we worked with a uh, company in all of that. Uh, for novel charts, there's a lot of charts that swallow advantages today. Uh, the novel chart stuff was a big technical hurdle, and I didn't realize the vast differences in the formats that the uh, novel people like to use for some reason. But uh, yeah, no, we solved that problem, and uh, at this point, we're just trying to find the uh, back end of the front end and just get the application up and running online and get the end users for the yeah, I think the to the So it's up to me. That's where we are at. Any questions? Oh, it's for developers. Uh, developers who want to make uh, Mac geo-based applications. Because they don't have all the tools and resources to do what I did, I'm providing that and my simple user interface that they can just create stylish maps and then compile them into the applications. I don't know if I asked this before, but we're going to have a long time ago anyway. How did you get in? Like, why Why did you want to get into this? What was your main drive to it? Uh, I'm kind of geeky and I really get into things uh, that I don't do it. I'm not going to do something I get into or get into it. And then there's actually a, a large community of math geeks out there, and it was just uh, really interesting. I wanted to dive into that and get involved with that, and I was going to go through it. And so I thought it was a really good idea. Definitely worth a spark. I'm sorry. Yeah. Very hands on events. Hi. 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 So the only questions we really work with right now is for advantage. Uh, they were really, really burning that they didn't have to do what I was doing. Uh, so it is <laughs> As you assume, the big limitations are generating all of the uh, map images. That's hugely computationally intensive. It takes tons and tons of data, tons of storage. Uh, but once those images are generated, uh, you find that the images are stored directly on your device or lines and you want to draw them on the Once you're at the end of the day, I don't know that they have to give you one side one. Yes, yes. Uh, we, we did do sample maps about the maps for our chats and we did the sample map for the uh, The turnaround to develop the styles was a better day and to generate the maps depending on the counter resolution we wanted was a couple of hours for a couple of days. In our last event this evening, we are standing in for the evening of the event is Pedro uh, CTO. Rob Myers. Rob, take it away. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Rob Myers. I'm going to mention that I'm a CTO of Collegio. Uh, all of you that don't have a uh, deck, it's uh, kind of a last opportunity to use it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we are in So, what do we do exactly? So, uh, Collegio uh, is a custom app that we have for a better communication between 